Our hair is put through stress every single day, which can lead to damage, dull and brittle hair over time. And we all know what some of those bad habits are like excessive heating, overwashing and color damage. But most of the time you'd be surprised that you could actually be destroying your hair without even knowing it. So in this video, we'll go over what some of those underlying habits you might not know of are, as well as go over some hair ingredients that you might want to avoid. So stay tuned till the end. Hi guys, you've seen Arsalan Media Pharmacist here on YouTube where I help you guys make better and more informed decisions about your health and wellness. So if that's something you're into, be sure to smash that like button below now and turn on the notification bell right next to it to stay updated with new weekly health and wellness videos. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram too for more behind the scenes. So without further ado, let's dive into those bad hair habits. Let me first preface this by saying while genetics and health problems have a direct connection to your hair's health and are separate issues that may not be under your complete control, this video will tackle the many things that you may be doing in your daily routine that are damaging your hair. So to begin, let's look at the first one, wearing tight hairstyles. In a 2016 study published in the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology, researchers found a strong association between scalp pulling hairstyles, tight ponytails, braids, knots, and buns, and the development of traction alopecia, or gradual hair loss. So to maybe combat this, try wearing your hair down whenever possible, and if you insist on tying your hair back, keep it loose to avoid causing breakage or strain on your hair fibers. Number two, brushing your hair when it's wet. Your hair is at its most fragile state when it's wet and it's susceptible to damage. It is best to try to comb your hair before washing it to reduce tangling and also allow your hair to dry at least halfway before brushing. And if you have textured hair or tight curls, always comb your hair while it's damp using a wide tooth comb for better results. Number three, towel drying. Regular towels are usually made with rough, coarse fabric, which leads to more friction when rubbing against the hair. You'll end up creating frizz, pulling on fragile strands, and causing damage and breakage. Instead, opt for a microfiber towel, which glides easily over hair, reducing strain. Links in the description below. Number four, sleeping on a cotton pillowcase. This kind of ties back in with towel drying. When sleeping on a cotton pillow, this can lead to tangled hair when we toss and turn at night and contribute to all that breakage that we want to avoid. The smaller fibers, let's say on a silk pillowcase, prevent your hair from excessive pulling as you toss and turn, which leads to smoother hair in the morning. So if you can opt for a silky pillowcase instead, you just might thank me later. Number five, taking excessively hot showers. This is because the heat can strip away your hair's natural oil and without it, the hair becomes dry and brittle and more prone to breakage. For best results, shower with lukewarm water for no more than 10 to 15 minutes, two to three times a week. And for a final rinse, use cold water to help lock in extra moisture. Number six, hair sunburn. So it turns out that you can get sunburn on your scalp. The UV rays target the hair protein and increase free radical damage, making the hair weak and prone to hair loss. UVA and UVB rays can damage the hair cuticle, resulting in hair discoloration, split ends, hair thinning, dryness, and frizziness. So just as you need to protect your skin from the sun, you need to do the same with your scalp as well. So to combat this, try using a broad spectrum sun protector that's residue free on days when you'll be outside for a while. And again, links for everything will be in the description below. Number seven, swimming in chlorine and or salt water. Now this doesn't mean avoid swimming in pools or your favorite beach. It's more about knowing what to do with your hair to make sure that it isn't damaged. The American Academy of Dermatology says to immediately rinse the ocean or pool water from your hair before applying a deep conditioning cream or oil, which will help form a protective barrier around the hair shaft and lock in moisture. I've also heard that it helps to get your hair wet in a shower and use a leave-in conditioner. That way when you do jump in the water, your hair won't soak up as much of that chlorine. Number eight, conditioning your roots. You want to avoid your roots while conditioning. Not only are the roots the youngest hairs on your head, it makes sense to focus more on the ends of your hair instead, since the ends are older and need more moisture. So start from the ends and comb the conditioner to the mid lengths of your hair to hydrate your strands where they need it most. Number nine, Overprocessing. These include perms, relaxers, professional straightening, and coloring. All these can make your hair seem like it's healthier after the first or second session, but if you go overboard on them, the cuticle can break down and cause the hair damage, which is why the AAD recommends extending the time between your sessions to 8 to 10 weeks 
if possible. And lastly, number 10, let's break down some of those ingredients you want to be conscious of because you could already be following the previous nine steps I've mentioned, but if you're using products with any of these five ingredients, you might be counteracting your healthy hair habits. Let's look at the first ingredient and I'll try to be brief with them, but if you want me to go more in depth with them, let me know in the comments below. Number one, sulfates and you've probably heard of sulfates by now a lot of products that are tailored as natural hair care these brands proudly label their packaging as sulfate free this is because sulfates are harsh on the hair and scalp and can actually strip away the natural moisture that keeps your hair shiny and soft. So look out for those tricky names like ammonium laurel sulfate or sodium laureth sulfate to name a few. Number two fragrance the term fragrance allows manufacturers to opt out of including the list of ingredients used to create that fragrance as the term is not regulated by the fda so you really don't know what constitute as fragrance and it can cause irritation which can sometimes lead to itching to visible symptoms such as redness or scaling so opt in for fragrance free products in the meantime number three Formaldehyde, a common one in shampoos is quaternium 15. They can also be found in the chemicals used for Brazilian blowouts in salons. So it's good to do your research before getting that done and be conscious of formaldehyde and formaldehyde releasing agents. Number four, triclosan. It's an antibacterial agent that's often added to personal care products as a preservative. We still don't have enough conclusive evidence to say for sure that it's safe. So in the meantime, it may be best to avoid it. And number five, DEA and TEA, they act as emulsifiers and foam agents that reduce surface tension so water-soluble and oil-soluble ingredients can blend together. In 1998, researchers found a link between the topical application of DEA and cancer in animals, but the effects on humans are unclear, which is why the European Commission has banned DEA in cosmetics to err on the side of caution. Number six. Retinol palmitate. It is an ester of retinol combined with palmitic acid. It's a known skin irritant that can cause peeling, scaling, redness, and itching. Some have a sensitivity and others don't, so it's best to identify if you are sensitive to this ingredient or not. And some experts are on board with it and others aren't fully. And the list goes on, so let me know if you want me to do a video that goes into this topic more in depth. And while there are many bad ingredients in shampoos and harmful shampoo brands, plenty of shampoos use only natural, non-toxic, and organic ingredients. So if you're suffering from hair loss or unhealthy hair growth and think chemicals are to blame, try switching to a natural alternative. And that's it guys. I hope that this video gives you a better understanding on bad hair habits to avoid and maybe will help you to achieve healthier hair in the process. All in all, I also hope this video was insightful to you guys. The only thing I ask in return is just a simple like down below for the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for sticking to me all the way to the end and as always, I'll see you on the next one.